So they built the complex. And, you know, the first few years, you know, we were trying to convince everyone, hey, we have a huge pyramid complex in Bosnia. The biggest pyramid is bigger than Egyptian pyramids. Due to, when we did the uh, radiocarbon datings, the age is over 12,000 years. So they are like the oldest on the planet. When we measure orientation of the sides, we found out that it was less tolerance, less error than the biggest Egyptian pyramid. So it was the most precise orientation and so on and so forth. But then we don't intend to spend another hundred years convincing everyone that we have a pyramid complex. We had to move on. We have to find out what was the purpose, the true purpose of the pyramids. And then again, we asked help from the physicists and electrical engineers. So in last two years, four independent teams of energy experts came from different countries, Croatia, Serbia, Italy, and Finland. And they were measuring very interesting electromagnetic fields on the top of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. And they concluded in a very small radius of 15 feet, they detected and measured electromagnetic beam of 28 kilohertz frequency. Then we measured the strength of the signal. And another intriguing thing, on the bottom of the surface, the strength of the signal was 1.9 volts. When we lifted up the antenna, the strength of the signal was more than two times stronger, 3.9 volts. And so how, how high up were you to get the more than two times? 11 feet. 11 feet, wow. So, so what does that mean? I mean, according to our technology, which we can call Hertzian technology, closer to the source, the stronger the signal. You move away, the signal is getting weaker. But it seems that in Bosnia, everything is so different. In our case, if you move away from the center, from the source, the signal is getting stronger. So this is for the first time that we measured a phenomenon which we can call non-Hertzian phenomena. Mm-hmm. Now, today we don't have that technology, but the only guy who did experimenting with this type of technology 113 years ago in Colorado Springs was the guy who was born just 150 miles away from Bosnian pyramids. That was mm-hmm. Nikola Tesla. Mm-hmm. Now, Tesla was doing experiments. He uh, invented what we call today Tesla's coil, and he was able to send an energy wirelessly from one end to the other end of his lab, about 55 feet. And just before they burned down his lab in 1900, he performed the last experiment. He sent this signal the energy beam from his lab, from his coil, to the ionosphere around our planet. Then the signal reflected and came much stronger, non Hertzian phenomena. And he was able to lit up 20,000 homes in Colorado Springs. So for the first time, he proved that the free energy was possible, that unlimited quantities of energies were possible, that the wireless technology was possible. Unfortunately, you know, the big corporations did not accept this invention because, you know, free energy was not in their best interest. What they need is a profit economy. But imagine, if we have a free energy today, that would be the first pillar for the free society. What is the second one? The second one is the free flow of knowledge. And guess what? In the Bosnian Pyramid Project, we apply both things. We want to discover how this system, how this pyramid that produces energy even today, the free energy, how it works. And secondly, unlike any other scientific project, especially important archaeological projects, this project does not belong to the elite science. No selection of information. We are open for everyone. We invite everyone to come and join us. You don't have to be professional archaeologist, professor, or student of a couple of 
universities, you can just show goodwill, come and we'll give you opportunity to make discoveries on a daily basis. And that's what people know and they realize this project is different than any other. I think all of those that are listening should consider that a personal invitation from Dr. Sam to come to the pyramids and roll your sleeves up and get involved, right? Exactly right. Now, what we have done this summer, and that was one of the main topics of this conversation, Mm -hmm. we were working on the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. For five years, they were not letting us to work there. But finally, we we got the court judgment and uh, it was in our favor for the first time. Nonprofit foundation won over the government agencies and ministries. So we are allowed to go back and dig on the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. And guess what? After a few days, we discovered a black ceramic huh? three foot below the surface and about one feet above the concrete blocks on the Sun Pyramid. So if it is above the concrete blocks, it means that it was a later culture than the pyramid builders. However, that black ceramic can give us an idea that there was a very developed uh, community, a very developed culture, because when you find ceramic, it means you have you know, certain, you know, certain level of society. But if you find the black ceramic, it means that that civilization was able to produce very high temperatures to make the black ceramic. It tells us that even after the pyramid builders were gone in the area, we had very developed civilization. And then on the Bosnian pyramid of the moon, we discovered more pieces of ceramics, but this time that was ceramic, which most probably belongs to what we call the Butmir culture. The Butmir culture is the oldest culture in the southern part of Europe. It was six, seven thousand years before present. Uh, the Germans independently were working um, over there five, six years ago, and they discovered that uh, there is a continuation of at least 7,500 years. So we know that Butmir culture is very old, so we are finding pieces of ceramics that belong to the Butmir culture above the pavements, above the artificial, artificially shaped blocks and plates on the moon pyramid, meaning that the pyramid is even older. So we are finding more and more proof that confirm that the Bosnian pyramids are over 12,000 years old. And as a reminder, like we had in our first interview, first you know, a few months back, I did say that uh, on the moon pyramid, in the binding material, we discovered the organic material, meaning that uh, we were able to trace when somebody was making those blocks. And when we had it analyzed in Poland, in uh, Silesian Institute for Technology, on their Institute for Physics, they gave us the age of the organic material, 12,350 years plus minus 50 years, meaning that somebody was making those terraces on the moon pyramid over 12,000 years ago. So we are getting more and more hard scientific proofs and facts about the age of the Bosnian pyramid complex. Yeah, and that's very significant. You you can't really date the ceramics themselves, can you? Ceramics, very. no. Ceramics, no. But once you're finding in certain layer, you know, in stratigraphy, where you can see exactly what is the layer, then you can find some organic material below it, and then consequently you can get the age of mm-hmm. the, the ceramic. While we're talking about the ceramics, uh, have you found anything else new about the writing that you found on some of the uh, megaliths and stones? Now, in the underground labyrinth, several megalithic blocks have carved symbols. Some of the symbols, they look like arrows. Some of them look like runic writings. And a matter of fact, one of them, uh, we were able to identify seven symbols that are identical to the runes 
and runic writings, as you know, is probably the oldest European writings, which goes back six, seven thousand years. You know, Middle Europe, and then they went north, Scandinavia, and then they went west. You know, England, a couple of thousand years back. Well, seven symbols we are finding. We got the first uh, try of decipherment. A professor from the U.S. She based her decipherment on Ralph Blum's book about the runic writings. And according to her, uh, the message was as follow. The gate has been closed. We need to stay, fight and conquer until the gate is open again. Mm. Now, That's this amazing. Message <laughs> this message is very intriguing, to say the least. Whatever we do, we try to get at least two, three, or four independent verifications. When it comes to the materials, that's what we do. When it comes to radiocarbon dating, that's what we do. But also when it comes to this uh, decipherment, also we will need the help from the experts in the runic symbols to figure out what was the message left for us. Now, Sam, that message that you just quoted, I remember seeing that in your book. And yes. when you're saying gate, I think in the book, the quote that you actually had was Stargate. Is that right? Uh, some type of the cosmic gate. The yes. cosmic gate. Okay. That's, that makes it even more intriguing in my book. Um, yes. and, and now you're, uh, another thing quickly before I forget, um, human remains. Have you found absolutely no human remains at all yet? We have not found any yet. Huh. Even though even though 740 meters, which is about 2,400 feet, it's a, it's a huge area. But in all those tunnels, we haven't found any human remains. And matter of fact, it seems that the second civilization who came and sealed everything off, first thing that they did, they have removed all the tools and the bones, artifacts that belong to the original builders because we are not finding any. So uh, right now, that's the explanation that I have. And I have to say that in some of those sections that were sealed with the walls, once we removed the walls and, uh, you know, 10 or 20 feet of the filling material, we were finding open sections, you know, 100, 150 feet long. And that was a special feeling when you get inside the area where human foot has not been for thousands of years. But even in those sections, we have not found uh, any artifact like, you know, we could uh, expect, you know, the tools or bones or, or even ceramics, more ceramics inside. But in uh, some of the new sections, we are finding more card symbols. So we keep everything at the original place. So we want to make sure that they are there, they are not damaged. So in the future, once we have the experts for the, you know, ancient languages, hopefully we'll be able to find out more about the builders. So let me make sure I get this straight. You're finding in the new sections that you've excavated, uh, you're finding more writing and carvings, but you're still not finding pottery or tools or instruments or uh, any kind of uh, remains like human remains or clothing or anything like that. Is that right? That's correct. Wow, that's very interesting. Um, we're going to go to a break in about a minute or so here, but before we do, I want to remind everybody uh, of a couple of things and get them to be thinking about questions that they might want to ask. You can ask questions in the chat room at inceptionradionetwork.com. You can also dial in and talk to Sam yourself at 888-919-2355. And uh, I will put some more of those links back up in the chat room for everyone to find for your books, Sam, The Pyramids Around the World and Lost Pyramids of Bosnia, and also The uh, History Beyond the Veil. A um, couple more things before the break, though. I wanted to mention, I believe that epicvoyagers.com, which is the epic website, uh, has actually got a link, and you can go directly to their YouTube link if you want to. Um, and I think they have a five-part series 
of Sam presenting all of this information with the most fabulous photographs you've ever seen. I was there in uh, Grapevine, Texas in May to see this presentation, and it is really spellbinding. Um, And if you went to www.youtube.com slash user slash Epic Voyagers, you would find those, uh, I believe it's five-part series uh, of Sam making this presentation. And Sam also has at his website... uh, under media or multimedia, Sam, I think, you have a lot of links to uh, videos that you've made too. Is that right? Yes, and uh, we have our YouTube uh, TV channel also. So there are about 50 different video clips and documentaries, a lot of testimonies from our volunteers, but also from our scientific conferences. So people can find a lot of materials from the sites. Okay. Um, Why don't all of the listeners be thinking about questions they can ask? We'll take a couple or three minutes here for a break, and we'll be right back probably in about five minutes with Dr. Sam Osmanovic talking about the Bosnian pyramids. Okay? Thank you. Welcome back, everybody. You're listening to InceptionRadioNetwork.com, and this is the Epic Voyages show, and we are just thrilled to have Sam Osmanovic with us tonight. We talked to him back in May, and since we uh, talked to him that time, he's been over in Bosnia with nearly 700 volunteers and and I don't know how many dozens of technical esper- experts working on his excavation of the Bosnian pyramids. Um, and he's told us about the ceramics that they've been finding and it's just been very interesting if you've missed the show so far please check the archives there at inceptionradionetwork.com because it's well worth uh, checking out the call-in line is 888-919-2355 and we're ready to take uh, questions from all of the listeners also on the chat room a uh, couple of things I wanted to mention that I hadn't said anything about yet. There is a conference coming up during the first couple of weeks of uh, September this year. I think it's September 4th or 8th or something uh, through the 12th, around that uh, period. And it is the Bosnian Valley of the Pyramids Conference, and there will be a guided tour to some uh, sites that are nearby with, with other kinds of relics. If you want information on that, you would go to bodymindspiritjourneys.com slash bosnia2012.html. Uh, and as I understand it, Sam, anybody who wants to come could join you on that? Of course. Like I said, uh, no secrets. Everybody is welcome. We need people to promote the project. This year, the conference will be held in uh, Visoko, where the pyramids were discovered on September 8, 2012. And uh, two days before the conference, we're going to have a guided tour to the sites, to the Sun Pyramid, Moon Pyramid, Pratnica Tumulus, Underground Labyrinth. So for two days, we're going to have tours, Thursday and Friday, the 6th and 7th. And then on Saturday, we're going to have the conference. And on Sunday, we're going to have a very interesting excursion to the place where the Bosnian stone spheres were discovered. Now, this phenomena also uh, is uh, located in uh, western Mexico, southern Costa Rica, Easter Island, New Zealand. So it seems we got a lot to learn from the ancients. This year, in our conference, we're going to have some very distinguished lectures. Klaus Dona from Austria, uh, as they call him, Austrian Indiana Jones, is one of them. He's well versed in hidden history. He has a huge collection of the ancient artifacts, which obviously do not belong to the known civilizations. He's going to have a huge exhibition in Vienna, Austria, this fall. Philip Coppens of uh, UK from Edinburgh is coming. He's also the pyramid researcher and ancient megalith sites researcher. We're going to have Dr. Paolo de Bertolis from Italy, who has been recording different ultrasound and electromagnetic phenomena on Bosnian pyramids. And the fourth one, uh, a young guy from Sarajevo, uh, Senad Pahor, 
what he's been doing, he's been making a 4D presentation of Bosnian pyramids. The fourth dimension is the time. So he will be showing how the Bosnian pyramids complex has been going through the time, from 15,000, 12,000, few thousand years back until today. And why the pyramids are covered by so much of vegetation and the soil. So I think it will be a very interesting conference in Bosnia. That sounds really interesting, uh, Sam. And again, the call-in line for questions is 888-919-2355. Sam, it looks like we might have a phone call on the line. Uh, Hello, you're talking to Sam Osmanovich on uh, InceptionRadioNetwork.com. How are you tonight? Very good. I've got a couple of questions. In your book, in one of the tunnels, there's a white vapor that you took a picture of with, along with the tunnel. I was wondering if you could tell me what that was caused by, or if you guys don't know what it was caused by. Also, how old, what is the oldest part of that pyramid complex you have come across? And what are your feelings about why the tunnels were walled off? And if you have time, I'd like to know if you know the when the hill was being shelled during the wars, was it a high pitch vibration or was it a low pitch vibration that the hill would make when it would be hit with incoming rounds? Okay, okay. so let's take it one at a time. What about the um, vapor in the tunnel? Sam? What we found in the tunnels using digital cameras uh, is that uh, we are able to film two different types of things that uh, are not really visible uh, by naked human eye. The first one is uh, what a lot of people call orbs. They are like uh, spherical light being. They come in different shapes, different sizes, different colors. And it seems that if uh, orbs do exist, we have a lot of them in underground labyrinth, hundreds and hundreds of them. And they usually concentrate where some type of action is. For example, if the guide is bringing the tourist groups, there is a lot of them around the guide because the guide is talking. If we are doing some work in the tunnels, for example, we are installing the wooden support, they would be around the workers. So... It seems to me that they are very joyful and good intentional. And the second thing that we can see on some of our photos is uh, some type of the foggy. Is it entity or not? The time will show. But we know that in some tunnels we can see the airflow. It goes in, you know, a direction back and forth. And this uh, foggy entity moves left and right. So it seems that it has the movement of its own. So at this point, it's hard to say, uh, are they really entities? Are they, you know, some spiritual beings uh, or some reflections in our digital cameras? But I think they are very interesting uh, phenomena in underground labyrinth. The second question was about the oldest pyramid complex. According to the mainstream science, the Egyptian pyramids are oldest. They are saying 4,600 years. And the biggest pyramids were built during the 3rd, 4th, and 5th dynasty. Of course, I disagree with that because there is not a single proof that Pharaoh Djoser, or Cheops, or Kefren, or, or Mycerin, or Sneferu built those huge colossal pyramids. Of course, Pharaonic Egypt did not have tools, knowledge, engineering skills to build them. So they are much, much older. How old? It seems over 12,000 years. Because in those pyramids, like in Cheops pyramid, it seems that um, the salt and the shells were found and the organic uh, material, when it was radiocarbon dating, it took about 12,000 years BP before present. Uh, Chinese pyramids, they are saying uh, everything started with Emperor Qin 2,200 years ago. I disagree. There are two types of pyramids in China. The biggest, the most superior, and the oldest, over 12,000, and 230 smaller ones that do belong to the known Chinese emperors. Peruvian pyramids, they are saying up to 3,000 years. I disagree. 
you can see that uh, pyramids in Tukume or Kavachi pyramids, they're at least 7,000 plus years in age. So, you know, this way we realize that the pyramids are much older than what we consider the oldest known civilizations like Sumer, Babylon, Akkad, Assyria, ancient Egypt, and so on. And now I'm coming to the, to the answer. What are the oldest ones? I think so far that the Bosnian pyramids are the oldest ones because we got some hard scientific facts about 12,350 years in age. Probably even more than that. So the time will show when you get enough radiocarbon datings. But I think that the, the pyramids themselves will ask that our scientific paradigm be changed. The third question is, the third question was about the tunnels. I did not quite understand. You asked why the tunnels were probably sealed. Uh, like I said, we can see the traces of two civilizations. The first one, who had very advanced engineering skills to build a huge underground network. And today, even 12,000 years after the building, those tunnels are there. They have not collapsed. So you have to have engineering skills for that. And the second one, who had to move hundreds of thousands of tons of materials to fill in all those tunnels and to move millions of rocks from riverbeds to make drywalls every 10 to 15 feet. So it was a huge construction feat and both civilizations were very advanced because they were able to maneuver with huge quantities of materials and we don't know nothing about them. So that okay. was the third one, yes. And the fourth one was about the vibration uh, of the pyramids. Uh, like I said, we have done a lot of measurements. Ultrasound has been detected. Electromagnetic energy beam has been detected several times. Infrasound, uh, that's the vibration, uh, also has been detected. We cannot hear that vibration, but we know that the vibration of the pyramid is a little bit different than of, of our planet. So... We are just opening a new door and we will need more scientists to, to, to get involved in this project to help us understand the whole complex. I have one more question if you have the time. Yes. Um, what was found beneath it, the giant ceramic lid, acting almost like a, like a insulator would, like a ceramic insulator on a power line? and it actually had a relief map, a three-dimensional relief map of the entire valley system? Yes. And printed on it? Yes. Uh, our main principle is we don't want to move anything from its original place. So we keep everything in original place, but we use the high-tech instruments like georadar instruments to figure out if there was anything uh, below or inside those ceramic blocks. Now, inside ceramic blocks, we are finding most probably quartz crystals. We are finding minerals. But below them, below that big block, megalith K2, uh, Georadar has not detected entrance or anything like that. So it's seen that it's simply sitting on clay floor and uh, the position of that block is important because it's exactly above the underground water stream. Okay, those are great questions. Thank you very much. Um, let me give that uh, uh, call-in line call number in. out again. It's 888-919-2355. And we have um, another question in the chat room here, uh, Sam. Um, there's a little bit of, of confusion maybe about exactly what was it in the organic material that was able to be dated and explain that because so much of what you were discussing were rocks and ceramics. Yes. One more time, briefly, what was the story again about dating the organic material? On the Bosnian pyramid of the moon, we have unearthed a huge paved terrace. That terrace is made of two layer blocks. The top layer, which is approximately three centimeters or one inch, and the bottom layer, which is about four inches. According to the Institute for Materials from University of Zenica in Bosnia, the top layer has been glued to the base, to the bottom. Now, between the top and the base, there is a binding material. 
So when we found it binding material, we said, well, if we can find organic material in the binding material, then we can figure out the age, when they were actually binding, when they were gluing the top layer to the base. And guess what? In that binding material, we did find